Today, we're going to talk about how to cure the silent killer hepatitis for only $1,000 per pill. Now, the catch is you have to take this for roughly about three months. And roughly, there's a little more than 90 days in three months. So that comes out to $90,000. Now, before I get into the cure, let's talk about what hepatitis is. It's inflammation of the liver. We're primarily going to be discussing uh, viral hepatitis, okay? But there's also other causes of hepatitis, like an autoimmune, which could be triggered by various things. It could be triggered by a virus, vaccine, some drug, or other things. But there's a lot of people who have hepatitis. It's like 325 million people worldwide have hepatitis. And the problem is there's not a lot of clues or symptoms to give it away. That's why they call it a silent killer because you don't know what's going on. So what's happening is the virus ghosts your immune system, which means it hides within our immune system below the radar so it can't be detected. And at the same time, it hijacks our own immune system. So our immune system's antiviral weaponry cannot be activated. So it paralyzes our immune system so we can't fight back while it creates a lot of destruction. And over time, that viral destruction then turns into inflammation and possibly into fibrosis. So the cure, it's a drug called Solvaldi. Now they do use other medications with this uh, medication, but Solvaldi has a pretty high success rate for hepatitis type C. And the definition for successfully treated apparently means curing. And so the cure rate or successful treatment um, is roughly between 80 to 86%. Now, the problem with this drug, number one, is the cost. It's $1,000 per pill, and a person could spend anywhere between $80,000 to $160,000 for a round of treatment. Now, the question I have is, why is it so darn expensive? Well, the reply is the R&D. It takes a lot of money to develop this drug. But there's a very interesting paper I'm going to put in the description that talks about the funding that they get in their R&D. But apparently, this drug got over $60 million in awards, Okay, both direct and indirect awards. Now, where does the government get their money from taxpayers like you? So you pay for a lot of this uh, drug research on the front end, as well as the back end. And it's very similar to me opening up a McDonald's franchise where I get you to pay for this, for all the initial cost, right? And then I get you as a customer. You come in there and you pay for the product. So you end up paying on the front end and the back end. Lots of people aren't aware of that it's the government that's paying for a lot of this big pharma R&D, which I really think there should be a law that they have to pay us back. But anyway, what I did is I dug into some real interesting patents on using herbal remedies for hepatitis that I'd like to share with you. There's three, three main patents. Uh, the first one involved wormwood extract, uh, coax root, and red sage root. And they claim to have a pretty high cure rate, 95% uh, for hepatitis type A and 90% for hepatitis type B. Apparently, this blend of herbs was a secret prescription, which is handed down in a certain family from generation to generation. Well, when you apply for a patent, you have to reveal the combination of herbs. So I put that information down below. In the next patent for hepatitis, uh, they used nutgrass, and an herb or a weed called Nargamatha. Nargamatha is the world's worst weed. And it's an extremely hardy herb that is just invasive. And it's just so interesting about these weeds, um, like milk thistle is a weed, and nettle root is a weed. And a lot of these weeds have natural chemicals that give huge health benefits. And apparently Nargamatha has some great properties to deal with hepatitis. And again, I put all these links uh, to the patents down in the description. Now, the next patent involves milk thistle, which is one of my favorite herbs for the liver, especially in protecting the liver against um, all sorts of things, including toxicity from chemotherapy, toxicity from alcohol, toxicity from Tylenol. Milk thistle helps to decrease this um, transition from inflammation to fibrosis. But this blend of herbs uh, as a remedy for hepatitis uh, includes milk thistle, artichoke, licorice, turmeric, ginseng, 
stinging nettle, and ginger. And the recommendation is to take it three times a day, about one and a half hours before you eat. Now, I cannot talk about inflammation without mentioning vitamin D, okay? Vitamin D3. Um, very interesting research. I'll put that down below. But a vitamin D deficiency is associated with the pathogenesis, okay, of hepatitis B and C viruses. Now, what does that mean, pathogenesis? It means the creation of these diseases. So apparently, when you're low in vitamin D, which a lot of people are, it makes you more susceptible to getting hepatitis, which is very important to know because having enough vitamin D actually can protect you against getting this virus, as well as if you have the virus, it can help minimize the damage. Because think about what's happening. You have this virus that has hijacked your immune system. And vitamin D is the most important vitamin to help regulate your immune system. Vitamin D is involved with almost every part of your immune system, including the innate and acquired part of your immune system. And if you have hepatitis, whether it's coming from a virus or it's just autoimmune, uh, chances are you're going to be low in vitamin D. Vitamin D also decreases the replication of viruses. So make mental note of that and make sure you get enough vitamin D. There's another remedy that I would take if I had hepatitis and it would be NAC. That is a precursor for glutathione. It can greatly help the oxidation and inflammation and the collateral damage that occurs uh, when you have hepatitis. And I'll put that link down below too. So this video really is about giving you more information to be able to dig in and do research if you personally have hepatitis. And I think the most important video for you to watch next would be my video that I did on vitamin D and the immune system. Check it out. I put it right here.